I am buying 42 houses in this neighborhood in one deal. I'm doing the whole thing without using any of my own money. In this video, I'm gonna walk through the deal, show you how we found them, how we funded them, and show you how we're doing it without using a dime of our own money. So these 42 houses that I'm buying are all tenant occupied, except this one. This one is vacant and it's a pretty typical house. All the houses in this neighborhood are very, very similar. Some are a little bit different, but overall, they're pretty much all 900 to 1100 square foot. They're all slabs. They all have three, four bedrooms. Some of them have one bathroom. Some of them have two bathrooms, but in general, they're pretty much the same footprint. So let's go inside this house just so you can get a feel for what the properties are like. And then we're gonna talk numbers. I'm gonna show you how I found the deal, how I funded the deal, how some funky things kind of happened along the way and what it ended up looking like when we closed. I actually got this deal from a local wholesaler. She brought me the deal about a year, year and a half ago. I remember looking at it, the buyer wanted three and a half million for those 42 houses, which is a pretty good deal. That's about 83 grand a house. Now this neighborhood is a little bit rougher, but it's not a horrible neighborhood. It's just kind of a little bit rougher neighborhood in a pretty darn nice area. So what we ended up doing at that time was passing. We didn't have the funding to put, you know, money down on it. A lot of these houses need some work. So we needed to raise a ton of money to put down on it. You know, 20% of $3.5 million or 700 grand. And then we needed to probably raise another three to $500,000 to put money in these houses over the next couple years. We didn't have that at the time. We didn't have the management in place to take over 42 tenants, you know, tenant occupied houses. So we passed, didn't do the deal, didn't really think much of it. About a couple months ago, the wholesaler reapproached us and said the person who had all these houses, the, the landlord that owned these 42 houses, was really, really ready to sell. He would even honor that same 3.5 purchase price which is awesome because in the last 18 months, these houses probably went up about 20% in value. So a ton of value got added, but we didn't have to pay for that value. We could still get it at that $3.5 million price. He'd had a couple of people pull the strings on him. You know, a lot of people would get these properties under contract. I think at least two of them did and couldn't perform because they were trying to wholesale them off. We're the end user on this deal and that's what we told him. And after a little bit of talking, we did gain his trust and we got him under contract for three and a half million without even getting inside any of them. The contingency in the contract was I needed to get in five houses before we fully committed to the deal. So we put 50 grand down on it and we said, if you get me in five houses, we'll make that money non-refundable and we'll commit to the deal. A little bit of a risk on our part, but it's what we felt like we had to do to get this deal. And when I show you the numbers and tell you the numbers and how much equity we have in this deal from day one, it's gonna blow your mind. This is the best deal we've ever done and it's not even close. This is actually the first house I got into of those five houses. And before I got to this house, I drove around this neighborhood obviously and looked around and I was, I was pretty pessimistic. I thought this guy seems to me like he's potentially a slumlord. He's bought these houses over the past 30 years. A lot of the outsides are in kind of rough shape. So I thought this deal's not gonna work. We needed to walk these five houses to get a general feel for them. And if all these houses need 30, 40 grand, this isn't gonna work. The numbers aren't gonna add up. But as soon as I walked in this house, it had the tenant stuff in it because the tenant had just left. I was blown away because as you can see by this house, this is exactly how the tenant left it. We're probably gonna put 500,000 bucks cleaning, touching up, but that's it. And this guy was true to his word. He said, this is the standard condition of the houses, which is incredible and made this whole deal work. All right, now let's talk about the funding. As I said, we got it under contract for three and a half million dollars. The bank that we work with said they do an 80% loan on this property. We're doing a long-term Burrs deal. We're buying them, fixing them up over a couple of years, and then we're going to refinance out, take some of that equity we created and pay back the lender that I'm gonna talk about here in a minute. So what we needed was 20% of $3.5 million or $700,000, and then we needed an additional roundabout number of $500,000 that we we're gonna put in these 42 houses over the next two years. We know that some of them are gonna need more work and some of them are gonna be like this and not need much work at all, but we wanted to make sure to have our bases covered. So in order to make this deal happen, we needed to raise $1.2 million, which 
seemed like a heavy lift, but it ended up not being. How I actually got the down payment was a new private lender that I'd never worked with before. He was a gentleman that I met through TikTok. He saw my TikTok and he started to kind of ask me questions and then he actually joined my mastermind. We used to have a mastermind, a national mastermind, and he joined it because he wanted to learn how to buy rental properties. He was very, very well off. He had several software companies and he said, you know, in the future, maybe he'd be willing to do a deal with us. I didn't really think much of it. About four months ago, he emailed me and he said that he was selling one of the software companies for a lot of zeros and was going to have some extra money to invest if I ever came across a deal was looking for a lender, like we're talking several million he was going to have if I needed it. So I thought this deal came up. I talked to him. We had a Zoom call and boom. He committed to the $1.2 million. I know that kind of sounds like a too good to be true story, but it's really not that uncommon. Did we make this work a year and a half ago? No. Could I have made this work five years ago? No, but I've been doing this for seven years. I have a proven track record. I own millions of dollars worth of real estate. I've paid off private lenders into the millions over the past several years, every single time successfully. And he's got an inside look at me and my operation through the mastermind. Yes, this may kind of look like a pie in the sky situation, but it wasn't. It's something that took time and it's something that anybody watching can get into. Will this take you two years to do? Maybe, maybe not. Will it take 20 years? Maybe. But eventually, if you do this and stick with it, you will start to develop relationships and meet people at the right time. And if you can kind of connect the dots, you'll be able to pull off incredible things. All right, so we committed to the deal. We were ready to close, but we needed to get these properties appraised. Now, this wasn't like a cash out refinance, so we didn't need to really get a super high number. We got these for three and a half million divided by 42, about $83,000 a door. So that's what we needed to appraise for, and that's kind of what I thought was gonna happen. So what we did and what we've done in packages like this, the bank will send out a few different appraisers so they get an unbiased view. They did some drive-by appraisals, and then a week before closing, we got the appraisals in. The numbers at the closing table were as follows. These properties appraise for about $125,000 a door as is. So they appraise for $5.3 million. We bought them for $3.5 million. So we have $1.8 million in equity from day one. Now, some of you may ask, well, he kind of got screwed on that deal, right? Like he could have sold these for more. He could not have. He got them wrapped up with other wholesalers and very, very few people are willing or able to close on a deal like this, deal with the tenants, take it over, have the funding, have the banking, have the hard money or have the private money, whatever it is, he tried to sell these for a couple years. So he is more than happy not to give away too much, but he owed about $300,000 on these. So he is taking home over $3 million. He's getting older, he's retired, he's in his 70s. He's happy, we're happy. This deal worked out for everybody. And let's talk about what we're gonna do over the next couple of years to even inject more equity, make this a better deal, and pay back our initial private lender plus interest. Before I tell you our action plan over the next two years, I wanna point out the cops behind me. This is the second property we visited today and we saw cops outside or in the area of both houses. As you saw in the drone footage, this neighborhood isn't horrible, but it's kind of known as the rougher area of this really nice surrounding city that we're in. So what we're gonna do is we're going to make this whole neighborhood better. We're gonna get a better tenant base in place. We're gonna manage the properties better. We're gonna take better care of them. We're gonna get tenants in place to take better care of the properties. So all our properties are gonna go up in value. I'm gonna go over how here in a second, but also all the other neighbors in this area, their houses are gonna go up in value and they're gonna have better neighbors and they're gonna probably take better care of their houses. Because if you're sitting on your front porch and you see four houses around you that have crap everywhere and stuff, you know, trailers here, cars parked in the yard and just not well taken care of, you're less likely to take care of your house. So it's gonna be a process, but we are going to make this neighborhood better. We're gonna improve the lives of the people that are already living here. And we're really gonna improve the lives of the tents that we bring in by increasing the value of everything and just being landlords that care and having pride in ownership. 
So here's our plane with that $500,000 extra we're getting from our private money lender. What we're gonna do right away, and we're actually starting next week, is we're going to do our part and show our tenants and the neighbors we mean business. We're going to come in and we're gonna clean up all the outsides of these houses. As you saw, there's a ton of big trees hanging over, you know, some outside things that need cleaned up. We have our tenants mow the grass, but they're not gonna be in charge of trimming trees. So we're gonna spend between 50 and $100,000 to clean up the outsides of our houses to show all the tenants that we're here for them. We're here to make it nicer. All the tenants are on month to month leases. We're not gonna kick any of them out, but they're going to have to adhere to our guidelines. They're gonna to have to take care of the properties. They're gonna to have to pay on time. They're gonna to have to keep the outsides clean. And if they don't, then we'll have to get rid of them. And then when we bring new tenants in, we'll get our type of tenants in and we'll be able to increase the rent to a little closer to market rate. Over the next two years, we're going to do that process, use that $500,000 for that. And I think conservatively, Two years from now, these properties will be worth 175 grand a piece. Even if the market shifts, these are the lowest end houses possible in a really nice area. So they're not gonna go down in value at all, even though I don't think the market's gonna crash. Anyways, they'll appraise for $175,000 a house, which is $7.3 million. We'll be all in for $4 million, our three and a half purchase price, plus the $500,000 that we put in the property. Now that's $3.3 million minimum of equity that we'll have. We'll do a refinance at that point. We'll pay back our initial private lender, his money plus interest. We'll probably have several hundred thousand or a million dollars to pull out cash if we want. We're gonna get our private lender paid off. We're gonna give him his money plus interest. And then throughout the next two years, we're gonna be paying him a little bit of interest from cash flow. So that's how the deal's supposed to work out. I'll be updating you as we go throughout this process and show you if the deal's working or not. Check out this video over here where I walk through a rental property, just one, not 42, and show you how a Burr's method should work with before and after pictures. It's my best video, check it out.